Floyd's killing. Today we come together to remember George Floyd, to remember the countless George Floyds of this country, and to also recognize that this moment has projected us in a, in a future that I personally believe will be more just for everyone in this country. Since last year, many of you remember where you were when you watched that video, many of you remember when you heard about it, many of you remember all of the things that happened. But I want you to know there's a lot of things that changed from last year. The first and most important thing was the world reacted. Not just Minnesota, the world reacted. The world reacted for the first time in a, in a meaningful way toward rejecting police and state violence against people of color no matter where they live in this world. That was something that changed fundamentally. We also saw for the first time a change that is still perpetuating today, a change in many industries. Where for the first time we saw corporations putting out statements of supporting black lives. We saw for the first time maybe even in Hollywood, you may have even noticed in your Netflix, there was a black t uh, uh, shows and black led shows that you saw. All of that and many more happened because of this moment, of this brutality that happened right here on 38th in Chicago. That is one of the most powerful things that many of us who are living in this moment don't realize. But this day last year, and the life lost on this street has fundamentally changed who we are. We have changed for the better. When Dante Wright was killed, it wasn't minutes people came out to the streets. When Dalal Eid was killed six blocks from here, it was minutes people showed up. And for the first time, even the media started to question the narrative of the police because they lie. They've historically lied about what happens to people of color when the police kill them. Just like Ronald Green, they lied for two years to that family about the manner that Ronald Green was killed. And that is still happening today. So I personally believe we have changed and the world has changed, but there's still a lot of parts of this country that hasn't changed. In fact, the most important aspect of change that we have been waiting for hasn't happened. The city of Minneapolis has not fundamentally changed how policing is happening in the city. That's a failure on every resident of the city, a failure of the politicians we've elected to put in office that don't see our humanity, that continue to pass the buck to somebody else. It's the state of Minnesota the state that has killed George Floyd that is still has not passed a single meaning policy in the state legislature. I want you to know when COVID came, there was nobody offering sympathies. Everybody wanted a solution. Everybody wanted a solution. People wanted the vaccine. People wanted to end this. But the oldest pandemic of, of this country, the injustice, starting with the lynching and the complete annihilation of Native Americans in this country, to today what we are seeing, the incarceration of black people, especially black men all over this country. This injustice that this country has built is a responsibility on all of us to do something about it. And I'm asking every single one of you who came out today and have been continuing to come out every single day that it is us who really failed George Floyd. It is us who failed and continue to fail Dante Wright, Dalal Eid, and many of the people have been killed. The least thing we could do is share our voice. The least thing we could do is stand up for justice. The least thing we could do is to say enough is enough. At the end of the day, this government is our government. This street is our street. The tax dollars that the police officers are working with, that's our money. It is our responsibility to them and justice and to get that justice to be coming out. It is our responsibility. So today, as we are in this moment, the number one thing we all have to do is reaffirm our commitment to these families. We have to reaffirm our commitment to justice. We have to reaffirm our commitment to each other. And we have to reaffirm our commitment for a generation that is yet to be born who are not gonna carry this legacy because it is our time to solve this problem. It is our generation to stand up for justice. And we don't need a lot of people. We need enough committed people. We don't need a lot of people, we just need enough committed people. And we need you to spend your time, sacrifice your time, 
Sacrifice your energy, sacrifice your skill, sacrifice something for this cause. Sacrifice your money, do something. Don't buy a t-shirt just for today. Spend money for justice in this country. You spend money for everything else. And I'm tired every single day seeing people who care, but yet are unable to do what is necessary to be done. If you care, find out what you can do. It is showing up on the streets and marching and protesting. It is calling your legislators. In fact, don't even call them anymore. Go visit them at their house. Don't they knock it down in your house? Don't they be calling in at your house? Don't they be coming in and leafleting your house? Call them back and knock them back on their door because it is time for justice in this state and it's time for justice in this country. I want to end by saying one thing. Hope is not lost, y'all. We are the hopeful people. And there's a young generation right now that's standing amongst us right now, young people. You know, a lot of people forget that Dr. King wasn't that old. He was 27 when he was leading that movement. So if you're a 20 year old, don't be acting around, looking around for somebody else. That's you we ask for you to stand up. If you're a 30 year old, you need to be guiding. If you're a 40 year old, we need your wisdom. And if you've been marching in the 60s, my God, we need to sit down and listen to you. Every single person in this movement matters and it's time for young people to stand up and demand justice. You're braver than us. You're more savvy than us. And it's time for you to take leadership in this moment. I encourage every single one of you, there is a power in the one person. Now, when Dante Wright was killed, something uniquely happened. For the first time in a long time, decision makers began to do what was necessary to be done. Almost two days after the killing of Dante Wright, the city council had a meeting. And that city council immediately fired the city manager and the police chief with one movement. And they didn't end there. They did something that the city of Minneapolis could not afford to do for us. They started to have the listening sessions. And they didn't want to wait for years of listening sessions. They did listening sessions. And a couple of Sundays, Saturdays ago, Brooklyn Center enacted a resolution, a framework, to fundamentally change public safety in that city. We, that to happen right here in our own community. But the reason why it happened is really what I personally feel is hopeful, but also a little bit sad. The, the decision makers were three black people who led the city of Brooklyn Center to make that decision. The mayor, who is black, Mayor Mike Elliott, and two strong African-American women, city council women, who made that decision for all of us and began to shine a little bit of light of justice inside the state. And so we have a lot going right now in this summer. So I'm going to ask every one of you to do one thing. This summer is going to be a hot summer in Minnesota, not because of the weather, but because of us. Until we get justice for George Floyd and all the families, and until we pass meaningful legislations, it is time for you to make a sacrifice this year to make sure that that Capitol building in St. Paul is decorated with your body, is decorated with your mind, is decorated with your voice, is decorated. And I want every single one of us across this state to be putting a lawn chair in front of those legislators until we get justice. It is time for this state to lead the nation in justice. It is time for the good people of this city to do that. And I'll end by saying this one thing. I don't believe the murder of George Floyd happened by accident. I personally believe that God put a burden on this community, a burden that the rest of the nation could not bear. And there is something uniquely that God sees in the community here in Minnesota. There is something unique in this, in us. There's something unique in the black bodies, the indigenous bodies, the white people of this state. There's something in us that in all of the country, this moment happened here because it is us of this great state of Minnesota that are gonna lead the nation toward a just moment. We're gonna lead the nation to a more just society. We're gonna lead the nation to recognize the humanity of black people. We're gonna lead the nation for the first time to see that police officers are not above the law. And for the first time, neighbors will look at each other and say, enough is enough, it is our time. So I end by this. 
I made a promise to these families. They shouldn't be coming out here every single day demanding justice. It is on us. It is on us. And so therefore, we must ensure and demand justice by any means necessary. Uh, later going on.